Welcome back to Worlds 2017. Inhibitors are recharged for our next game. It's going to be Gambit Esports going up against Team WE. Team WE, not quite the dominant start that we had expected from them in their first match against Lion. Yeah, it felt like uh, they were playing probably a little slower than I expected. We always talk about how they are like kind of that later game team, Elder Dragon team, whatever it is. But I would have wanted to see a little bit more out of Condi, most likely. I know he was against the Lee Sin. It's a little scary, but he has played things in the regional qualifiers like Kazix, Ezreal, Elise, J4. I would love to see him go back to some more picks like that and try and get the control of these games right away as opposed to just going for objectives. Yeah, and Team WE in that interview after their game had talked about never letting their guard down for the rest of it. So they might even actually go the other direction be like, we had to take these guys like really seriously. I do want to see them increase the pace of the game, like you said. I want to see them be aggressive because I felt like Gambit did fall a little bit apart because they kept being aggressive. If it can be uh, something that WE kind of forces the pace, Gambit might be able to uh, you know, trip on themselves a little. And it's interesting too, because Team WE have shown us kind of two sides of themselves, right? We've seen that Elder Dragon team, but at the same time in their final series to qualify here, they're level three diving towers yeah, every yeah. single game. So I'm, I'm wondering if, if caution means you know, playing that safer reserve game, or if it means, hey, we need to shut these guys down as fast as possible. I would, like I said, I would love to see the more aggressive one that we saw. And against uh, Blasting, I think that's an area where Mystic can potentially make a big opening that Condi can then go in and fully exploit, kind of like what we were seeing in that regional qualifiers. Uh, that said, Gambit, you want to see him play a little slower. I wouldn't mind just seeing them clean up the plays they went for. A lot of the times, Edward going for those engages, shorted the quickenings, those kinds of things. If he can clean that kind of stuff up, I think the plays they were going for were okay. I want to see them show a little more patience, right? I don't want them to go for, oh, you know, the Gragas, you're nearby, so why don't you just go for this gank? and not actually just setting things up, because the biggest thing that stood out to me was when they're going for these skirmishes or team fights, they have at least one or two people lagging behind in terms of when you want everybody to crash into the fight. So it was very staggered from Gambit when they were going for those fights, but like you said, the execution, bottom lane, top lane, jungle, it was kind of all over the place for them. Yeah, we have to keep in mind, these guys, it has not been that long since they've last played. Is that an issue you think that they can tackle in the couple hours between games, or or do they just have to focus on the easiest, immediate answers? I mean, it, it's tough to say, because like the draft from Gambit was one where it's hard to say how much prep they put into that specific comp, because, you know, Rise mid is not something we're used to seeing, uh, as well as the Camille top, that's not a comp that sh jumps out to you as like a standard team comp, so if this is how Gambit wants to play, I think they have to stick with it, but just clean up the execution side, versus like shifting your pick priority or anything like that. I agree. It's interesting too because Team WE, it feels like, I don't feel like they, we've talked about both of their styles, but neither one feels wrong here in the context of this match. Right, because you can say you take this slower approach, you try and drag the game out, you, you know that you're the better team probably than the people you're playing against, so as long as you limit the volatility in the early game, then yeah, you should over the course of time win that game. Uh, but then again, you're still giving opportunities for Gambit to maybe make a play. Yeah, because that's what happened in the WE game was they kept going for these kind of almost coin flip type team fights. They get more off of their macro play and their lane allocation and always stayed up in gold despite down in kills. But they had those opportunities for the other team, for Lion, to actually beat them, get it back into the game. And right now, I feel like if WE go up against Gambit, Gambit looked really sloppy. And even if WE given those opportunities, is Gambit the type of team that can win those team fights? It's a big question, too, because Blasting felt like a guy who, as you mentioned earlier, might struggle, might be a point of weakness. And when we saw Lion Gaming find so much advantage, it was on the back of mid and AD carry, those high damage, high impact roles. And I'm wondering, is there someone who can kind of fill that void on Gambit if it does come down to executing in a team fight? Well, I think PvP Sales is someone you have to look at just because he takes the Camille matchup, gets solo killed by the Jax. If you're going to play these carry versus carry styles, you have to be able to execute on them. They also flubbed the gank once against Geral, who was able to outplay it. So if you're going to take something like this, you need to actually be able to outperform your opponent, even if they take a carry matchup. It's very volatile, it's very hard to execute on, but you need to be able to get those advantages. So it's very very critical there of PvP Stales. I think justifiably so, yeah. not trying to throw you under the bus, but is, is this a guy we can rely on to step up? Do you think he has shown the track record in his own league that this is a guy that they can rely on to carry if they get those same opportunities? I think so, because even if you look back at Worlds last year when he was in the jungle position, he actually came up with a lot of really clutch plays and why Albus Noxluna was able to get out of that group stage. And so you know he has this big play potential available to him. It just felt like he came up short in their debut performance here at this Worlds. And for you, Zyrene, do you think it's the same? Do you think it's PvP Steos, or do we look to a guy like Kira, a guy like Diamond? I think it's Diamond Prox. Yeah. I, I, as a jungler myself, I'm watching what he was doing in the jungle, I felt like he was too fast to 
go on plays, and he's kind of the big one that I thought was impatient there, was it felt like he was trying to do too much and not take care of himself first and take care of vision first to set up the team. So they started going into areas blind. His casks were a little bit off. I felt like he was a little overwhelmed there. So I just want to ha have him take a breath, you know, slow down, and now he's up against Condi. So don't let that psych him out, but play the game out the way the Gambit has before. Going to have to find out, <laughs> see what's exactly what's going to happen. Diamond Prox, it could be PvP Stayhouse. They're going to take on WE, and we're going to see that match right now as we send it over to our casters. Thank you, Dracos. I'm still stuck with Frost, but at least we've got a hype game. And I barely need to say anything here because it's pretty much the wind up Frosker and, and let her go into her, her tales of history because this one dates back to about 2012. Go. This is literally the reason why I am casting League of Legends is because of both these organizations now rebranded, re-rostered, but the greatness is still there. This is the 2012 final that could have been Moscow 5, now Gambit Esports, and Team or World Elite, now Team WE. Like, I, I cannot emphasize this enough. I like, know. geeking out a little bit, <laughs> I always wanted to cast this. This was this was the passion. This was what the, the two titans clashing, and they now get to finish what they started in 2012. Yeah, and look, it was TPA that sort of stomped everything. And CLG EU. Yes, and CLG as, at the same time. TPA, of course, ending up being the champions of that particular year, but now they need to start here in the playoffs, pl play-in stage, if they want to make their way there. Oh, it's, it's dangerous stuff because Gambit did not necessarily look like a super powerhouse, but at the same time, it was Lion looking phenomenal, even WE struggling to close out that game. Exactly. Now this is a good kind of gut check punch to, to check on the, the, the gap in between these teams. You know, our oh, no, Lion... we're not talking about the gap again, are we? Yeah, the gap. It's getting wider. Oh, God, not again. It's particularly between <laughs> Latin America North and China yes. right now. Yeah, exactly. So the LPL, yes, Team WE had a very rough start. That was kind of expected, though, from Team WE. Like, I, I don't want to cheapen Lions when... Or, uh, cheap in Lions credibility in that match. They played amazingly yeah, they well. I think it was really just kind of a, a mismatch Baron call that lost a lot of their momentum. But Team WE do play very, very slow. If they beat you, they always beat you in the late game, which is why I really like this matchup stylistically. If Edward gets on that heavy Rome champion, if he's a bit more successful on, let's say, the Rakan pick than he was in his first game of the day, there's actually a lot of room that uh, Gambit can just start taking chunks out of Team WE, can just start abusing them, especially if they ramp tempo, because Team WE, you know, if you play fast and hard against them, sometimes they just stand back and just watch you do what your thing and say, okay, you know, wind you up, let you go, I'll see you at 35, 45 minutes, but it's not working as successfully in playing so far. They need to really tighten and clean up. Yeah, and also, like, Gambit, they took a little bit of a risk as far as the draft was concerned as well. I mean, they picked bottom lane and uh, and jungle and everything looks fine. You know, you've got Zyra Khan and you've got Gragas. And I looked at that draft and I was like, oh, this is ideal. This is a beautiful blue side draft. Everything's looking great. And then the Ryze and Camille came in. And I know that Ryze on this particular patch is a champion that people like to pick in that sort of counter pick matchup kind of style. Camille, not entirely sure how she's going to work and flat out honestly didn't. But could this have been because it was honestly a phenomenal draft as far as surprise was concerned out of Lion in that match because the Maokai was locked in. They're thinking, okay, we can take a carry versus tank matchup. We can shove that lane in, take things out. And then all of a sudden the Maokai is in the jungle and there's a Jax on the top side of the map. And it felt like things were a bit of a struggle as far as draft coming straight out of the gate in that particular game. So I mean something could change here for Gambit and maybe... It was a game that they thought was relatively over pretty quickly, and now they're going to be able to dominate. Like, there are a lot of question marks here, because we haven't seen them a lot on the world stage. You mentioned we went back to 2012 for, like, the last time we've seen them internationally the birth as a squad. Of, the birth of Silver Scrapes, really. Oh, yes. No, I, Oh, don't bring that up. Come the on. thing is, is that I don't want to put too heavily on, on draft. I know a lot of analysts like to harp on draft, and yeah, there is a lot of validity to it. There's a lot of cool... I like talking about draft probably a little bit too much. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Well, there's a lot of cool debate around it, but for all we know, the coach could have walked out of that, and Gambit could have walked out of it and said, we got exactly everything that they, that they wanted, and it simply was about execution failures. I actually really like the point that Zyrene brought up at the analyst desk, and it's something that I also see in Gambit when reviewing a lot of their VODs, is that it's kind of like their, their windows are, are really short on the setup for the play. It doesn't 
doesn't feel like they're thinking oh, five, three minutes in advance. It's kind of that split second gut reaction of, you know, five second window. I see something and I go for it, which means that not everyone is always in position. So your, your margin of actually executing on a play starts shrinking. Now, when it works, like when Diamond rocked up into the mid lane and threw that sick barrel. Oh, that was a stunning cost, yeah. It looks beautiful, but they didn't get the kill there. They weren't able to translate it into objectives. And then you start sliding backwards. So we need a bit more consistency and a bit more, um, you know, prolonged, proactive thought from Gambit Esports. Yeah, we need to go a little bit further than see hero, kill hero, as, uh, as was the quote from many years ago. But of course, the evolution towards Gambit Esports means that they've got a lot of different things here. And uh, Kira got a lot of respect in that mid lane. We saw that his Anivia was actually banned away. Of course, certainly something that we've seen him on. If you remember back to last year, that incredible victory that they showed us it was all about Kira, the fact that he was... The wall on, and the poppy. Oh, that was like my favorite game in the history of League of Legends. Still to this day, absolutely love it. The fact that Poppy, so, so good at helping things out. But here we are into Champion Select. We stepped in and then we stepped we back. We were sort of into Champion Select. I got excited. I like walked forward. I'm like, yeah, I'm ready to do this. But no, that's not happening just yet. Here we are. Damn, I got baited so hard. Okay. And outsmarted. I was. Oh, my God. You are just going well back in time today, Frosco. I'm a time traveler. <laughs> well, Galio and Zaya are going to be taken away here by Gambit as WE get rid of the Jarvan and the Sejuani. Uh, pretty staple bands there. I wonder if this means that they're going to put more priority on the Gragas. I would like to see Condi pick up something a bit more aggressive, especially looking across from someone like Diamond, who uh, can make those big plays if given the opportunity, if he sees it. I actually really love that ban. Yeah, the Alistair going to be taken off the board. And I'm glad that you mentioned Diamond Prox, because, of course, his second most played during the playoffs was that Kane. And uh, I haven't actually seen it so far. It's like, as an LCK cast, we just decided to move past the Kane possibility. We just decided that he wasn't really worthwhile as the Cho'Gath going to be locked in first up and WE considering the Cogmore here. And this is well and truly a, co a WE looking style if they do decide to lock this one in. Yeah, well, they almost got spanked by Kogma earlier on. Yeah. Unfortunately, Kogma decided to lose the game at 8-1-7, and seven, but it was a magnificent performance for the majority of it, and that is going to be the Mystic Special. They are the true OGs of blind pick Kogma. <laughs> well, looking to try and get some disengage for him as well, and Condi going to take that Gragas one more time. I love the flexibility of this champion. Can play aggressively in the early game if he wants to, and can try and get those ganks happening as well as we move over to Gambit to lock in there a couple of picks. Yeah, and already with Team WE, you have a lot of safety for the Kogma. The fact yeah. that you do have the Gragas there, it means that Janna rises up that much higher in priority and you wanted to see it. Here we are again. So, Kane being locked away for Diamond Prox. And he has had some decent success on the champion. The guy plays aggressively early. See whether it's going to work against Condi, who's pretty used to playing against aggressive junglers, given the fact that he's in the LPL. He's also very used to playing against Kane. Now, one of our top junglers in the LPL is a guy named Ning, the jungler for Invictus Gaming. He brought out Kane fast and furious out of the gate, played it multiple times, and Condi has a lot of experience looking across from this champion and understanding all of the chaos and all of the speed that Kane can bring to a game. So this is not a pick that would catch Team WE off guard. They should know very well how to deal with this. Well, 957 getting some cheers as he locks away his Shen. And the Varus was actually locked in for blasting there as well. So a lot of damage potential, but it's a little bit of a look back in time as far as the 80 carry meta is concerned. And there weren't a lot of bans stopping him from picking something like a Tristana, something like anything else apart from the Callista and the Zaya. I mean, it could be a really good read on the fact that you already saw the Kogma, and so you kind of have two different options. You can either look towards uh, a hyperscaling AD carry as well, or maybe you pick up something like Varus. You expect that it's the Kogma is going to be flanked by tanks, so you need to be taking some tank shredding ability in your AD carry. You've yep. got a really nice wash of, uh, of CC or crowd control coming out of Varus and Shogah, so there is a lot of potential that if Kogma steps out of position, that Varus and Cho can really punish him. Well, now, as the bands are coming in, that is going to be a brand taken away from Gambit. May not be Liquid, but still in spirit. Yeah, and of course, in that particular final that Liquid was able to win as Albus Knox Luna, it was Edward that was playing it as well. So everyone in the CIS region on the brand hype train. However, not necessarily so much in this meta. I do like the throwback respect, though, as LeBlanc is going to hit the bench. She, of course, a pretty fantastic LeBlanc player in the past and probably still. 
Yeah, definitely one of his uh, champions that he looks better on. Shea certainly has been slumping recently. I think that was pretty evident. It uh, was. In his last game, he went down like 20 CS, 30 CS in lane. Kind of touching on the brand really quick, though. It's also a pick that we see in the LPL probably more frequently than you would really expect coming out of a power region. Uh, and again, I actually really like brand. It kind of a big tank meta because of his passive and his ability to start shredding and doing more damage to those big, beefy champions. Yeah, well... The Thresh is going to be the ban away from Edward as well, so the Thresh pr Prince definitely getting the respect. And uh, Shie's Lucian going to be taken off the board, and he has certainly looked dominant on that champion as well. So Janna going to be taken away for the double disengage, most likely here for WE, and I would certainly respect that one. It's been working out so far here at the play-ins. That is going to be that. So Ben locking away the Janna for the Cogmore. But the game plan is not changing for WE. They struggled earlier. Yes, this is the tried and true composition for them. Everything, all of the weight of the world on Mystic's shoulders. But Ben is normally a playmaking support. You know, we don't usually see him on the likes of the Janna. And I thought for sure that they were going to change gears, especially across from Gambit Esports, if they did their homework. Or maybe they're just confident enough that they can allow, Oof. you know, picks like that and a very aggressive performance like Diamond Prox is Kane and just absorb it. And this is Gambit really moving back to comfort now as Kira not going to have his Anivia banned away this time. Was banned against Lion. Now, Edward, what is he going to take? If we were going to go back in time for Oscar in, I'd want the Sona personally. That that was my original... Like, this was when his name was Gosu Pep, you know, well back in the day. But Malzahar being considered, and that is going to be locked in. So is that Malzahar support? Could we theoretically have an Anivia support. Malzahar top lane, we're going back to season one. Cho'Gath support, yeah? I'm gonna bring some control back into this champion's <laughs> legs. I'm gonna say that it's probably Kira's, uh, Kira's Anivia. Again, that's his big signature legacy pick yeah, for that guy. And uh, Malzahar support, you know, it hasn't been too far off in the distance. We've seen it already pop up in the mid lane position today. And you're still bringing that same incredible lockdown. And speaking of lockdown, that's now Varus and Malzahar. Again, if Mystic ever steps out of position, he will be punished. Well, WE gonna take the Jace here into the mid lane, and I like it. Augment a lot of magic damage that you're inherently going to have come out of the Cogmore, and the emphasis on poke. You've got Living Artillery now, as well as the Empowered Shock Blast, to really make sure that Gambit cannot stand around and not make the engage happen. We know that they like to, and Edward is gonna have the Flash Ult to try and lock someone down, but Nethergrass may not necessarily be enough, and it doesn't have that AoE nature that the Quickness did have when he had the Rakan in his back pocket. Those nerfs to that ultimate actually did look like they affected uh, Edward and certainly no nerfs to uh, a targeted lockdown spell. It also means that while he's on the Malzahar, that his ability to roam and playmake in other lanes are really dependent on his level. You know, if he is someone like the Rakan, like the Alistar, he can leave lane that much earlier, start, you know, making those surprise ganks up onto the top lane into the mid lane. But as the Malzahar, he's a bit more dependent to sit down there for a lot longer, wait till level six, and then try to make a big play with that ultimate. Yeah, but we'll have a lot of ability to shove the lane as well. And I mean, I know Cogmore, a lot of extra range if he has that Bioarcane Barrage up there, but Varus, the Piercing Arrow, can really get things done earlier on. And Blasting, I was actually quite impressed with how Blasting was playing in their last match against Lion Gambit. Of course, he's the one that isn't the legacy player from either Albus Knox or, you know, Moscow 5, then Gambit. And so frankly, he's stepping up. You know, he's, he's, uh, he has been an impressive player, especially throughout the split for Gambit. Yeah, it's just a bit hard to shine when you're flanked between you know, the legacies yeah, of uh, exactly. the Thresh Prince himself as well as Diamond Prox, and then you got PvP Stayhouse and Kira on top of it. But I agree, I think Blasting's been holding his own, and now he gets to really test himself across from Mystic. Because outside that blundered Flash Ultimate, Mystic was still playing pretty solid in a lot of those fights. And talking about tests, I mean, Kira now up against Shie. Shea, of course, has been a powerhouse. You mentioned slumping a little bit. But uh, Kira now on his signature champion. He's going to really be out of test, Shea. Now, I do want to mention the crowd a little bit right now as Mystic is acknowledging them with his icon. They are <laughs> chanting Jayo, which means refuel or good luck. It's kind of like add fire to the flame. So Gambit not only looking across from Team WE, but also that six man and the home crowd field advantage. And we just know how incredibly passionate the Chinese fans are as well. So there's a lot of pressure from that, but also a lot to be gained. So we'll see whether WE going to be able to harness it, or whether Gambit is going to be able to, as Schoenfire stated, 
silence the crowd. We do need to quickly check on where Edward is standing because Gambit do look like they're pulling something a little bit cheeky for this level one as Malzahar isn't bottom. He's looking for a delayed invade. This is four people from Gambit walking into this red jungle. Well, WE gonna move down as well, but we've only got one on the bottom side. Great double stun and there's the silence as well as Gambit gets some decent damage, but Otherwise, not so much more. Shea is going to move to his lane first. 957, a bit confused about what he wants to do, but those empowered auto attacks are going to get him working out here in this trade. It is really hard to deal with Cho, though, level one, especially if he has his Oracle Spikes. Needs to be careful, though. Okay, got the cooldown back. I like how they're both sort of made to auto attack after pressing buttons, you know? It does make some sense, as Blasting is going to have to get the heck out of the way of Mystic and Ben until Edward can come down and support him. But already, this is a really great start for Gambit. This is exactly oh, wow. what I wanted. A very clever, you know, early game play. And he could actually be setting up for a gank on mid. He's going to go through the wall. Yeah, Shea already down to half health there as well as he's going to jump forward. A flash comes out from Shea and Diamond Proc says, well, that's absolutely fine. And Shea is so incredibly low and he took the Doran's blade. So that's only one. Oh God, Kira, the auto attack is there. He's going to need another one as Shea jumps forward. Good flashback as First Blood comes in for Kira. This is what we're expecting from this clutch player. And this is so punishing because not only did he get the first blood, but he also burned the flash. So it is so easy to look for the same play again. Diamond Prox should just be camping that mid lane. The long range stun potential of Anivia is so punishing now that Chie is this vulnerable. And Diamond Prox, he's not stopping. <laughs> Well, he's going to bounce through this wall as Mystic's in trouble. Does land the slow there as the dash forward comes in, but Mystic able to get himself out of the way. But that is more summoner spells gained. And Diamond Prox has successful ganks now in two lanes in what feels like a minute and a half. Yeah, pretty much Raptor's red, immediately punishes mid, now punishes the bot lane, and has a wealth of options before him. Again, he's got so much CC in every single lane. Yes, he'll have to wait a little bit for bot, but he's still got the slow available to him from Varus. So. Where is he going to strike? Is it going to be the mid lane? Is it going to be punishing Mystic? Who knows, but I'm terrified about it. it feels almost worse than Zack, you know, as Mystic going to take a lot of damage. The, the flash He's from good. Blasting grabs another kill as the Akathian Surprise isn't going to be able to catch up. Just tries to get some minions, but barely does that as well. And we knew that Gambit were capable of this. As Shea is going to jump forward. Kira should get egged here and will most likely die. Remember, didn't have the flash. As Condi should be able to deliver this one over to Shea if he wants to. He just spends some time farming. Condi grabs the kill. It's a little bit of a disaster, but still a kill here for WE as they try and catch up to Gambit. Yeah, a little bit awkward there. The fact that Shea wasted his acceleration blast there, possibly looking for the big burst damage, and it's Condi that walks away with the kill, but, you know, I guess. Yeah, it's totally fine. And of course, we know Condi to be able to get these ganks working. Didn't even have to use the flashes. Now Diamond Prox is going to find him. They're even on level. Just the red buff is going to help out here. As Diamond Prox, I believe, wasn't spotted. But not a whole lot he can do here. As once again, the Shadow Step is going to jump forward, but it's basically just going to get him a fair bit of damage, and he's going to steal away that Raptor Camp. So nicely done. Thought just, you know, Shadow Stepping into a charged barrel is a bad idea, but it, it turns out it's not. This is actually massive. The fact that Diamond has taken both Raptor Camp rotations from Condi, is now contesting Krugs, and has two successful ganks. This is denying so much gold and time and experience from Condi. Well, Condi just going to bail from the area. Diamond Prox just in a little bit too much control, and you can see as far as camps taken, 24 to 10 is pretty ludicrous, as we are going to see this one again on the bottom side of the map. I the storm, of course, a longer cooldown. Oh, actually, no, not quite yet. I gotta stop reading that. It's hard to the flash forward. All too easy for Blasting. Yeah, and we said that Blasting has been solid, but this is his chance to, you know, prove himself in this veteran lineup, and he did just that, picking up a 2v2 solo kill. Of course, it was set up initially by Diamond, but this is, again, some of that weird wonky communication. We didn't yeah. see the end of that replay, I'm but glad. It, it looked like we were trying to hand the kill off to Shie, and it ends up in Condi's hands, which not entirely punishing. I mean, it's nice to have extra gold on the jungle. He can move it around to other lanes, but you would have liked it on the J so he can keep step with Anivia. Well, he's going to try and do it now as there's a knock up onto Blasting. Will have to get himself out of the way. And remember, no flash, and Mystic is going to grab that kill. Now looking for more damage onto Edward. And despite everything that went wrong earlier on, WE looking like they're stabilizing now. 
And it was a bold prediction from Condi, the fact that look at all of the vision that Gambit have behind that dragon pit. So not hesitating at all, because if he had, they would have been able to absorb it through the vision and just walk back to safety, just run straight through it and makes the gank happen. So trying to uh, grapple back into this lane. Well, once again, we have the Janna on WE. So we look at the gold and it's only 300 behind here for WE, despite the fact that they are struggling in some of these lanes. But look at where that... Yeah. Janna. It's Talisman. 300 for now. But you guys just wait. It's seven minutes into the game. That is only going to get worse. Because, you know, we were looking at the previous game that Debbie had against Lion and the fact that they held on to that gold lead for so long. And so much of that was simply in the support uh, you know, coin itemization. So we'll keep our eyes on that as Gambit. Gold lead has now just swung in favor of Team WE and they are now looking for a delayed swap. Yeah, a bit of a vacation towards the top side of the map here for Gambit. Relatively early, it's Diamond Prox with the Shadow Step, not actually going to get GA in a decent position, who's just cheating towards the side that has Condi on it. Yeah, and this is actually really smart from Gambit Esports, so they'll hold on for a second, because mid lane. Yeah, once again, no egg this time, as the body slam right at the edge, teleport. Not in time as 957 comes down. That's going to have to be cancelled as WE can head towards this Infernal Drake if they want to with 957's help. And that's what Gambit Esports were trying to play around was the Shin Ultimate. So they make the delayed swap after the Tower Fortification. They want to go into the Shin lane because they don't want to play cross map because the Shin will just drop down on them. So they will trade the Tower for their mid laner's life um, as well as control on the Infernal. So it's still an upward trade for Team WE, but I like the setup from Gambit. Well, they should be able to take this first turret here. Blasting, not gonna right, grab the solo gold. I believe Edward's gonna stick around. That is going to be taken. So Gambit, a lot of control on the top side at least. A lot of vision being put down as well. But WE looking to answer very, very quickly, and this will get them that gold lead once again. But this is really important that PvP Seos actually delayed how quickly they took this tower, because it now it offers an opportunity for Gambit to set up for the Infernal, and not just given away to Team WE, because they have superior control on the bottom side of the map by pushing that structure down. Well, Condi's going to move around. We'll see whether he's going to hand over this blue buff towards Xie. See, the delay in taking the tower, you can already see that Maus and Varus are already on their way down there. They're going to push the wave back, get control of the area, and start moving into the river and setting down their vision. So, again, just Cho'Goth right there, PvP Stayhouse, bought them a chance at this Infernal. Well, he's going to move over on top of this ward as well. And speaking of a chance at the Infernal, it does have a decent amount of vision towards the back of that pit. Moving over to grab that blue that we mentioned earlier. Pretty easy. Yeah, you mentioned the dragon. It's not exactly WE's focus to look for this one at this stage. Steos just going to hang around as this void monster and patrol the area. I'm wondering, he's just most likely waiting for 957 to push up, doesn't want the danger of a long lane. It's also the fact that he knows that 957 doesn't have his teleport, the ultimate was used mid lane, so Gambit Esports again make a great predictive call. We said that they felt too reactionary in their first game of the day. This is much better. Looking in advance, seeing that uh, that ultimate go down mid, pull their Cho'Gath from top lane after he pushes it off, and take the Infernal for free. So PvP Stehos uh, doing a great job this game, just kind of grabbing free objectives for his team. Well, at the moment, 957 has actually been able to pull ahead by about 12 CS. Should be able to get some work done on this turret at the same time. The Cho'Gath just wandering through the jungle, but you're right. I mean, it's not necessarily about that. There's the Nethergrass, blasting, looking for it. Oh, that layering CC was stunning, as Edward's going to be able to lock down the kill. Mystic trying to get one back, buying time as Shie makes his way in. Edward in trouble to the skies, comes down, but it's a great flash timing for Edward to get himself out of the way, and Kira turns out, turns up in the nick of time. Barrel comes in, Condi just bops him. 957 turns up, everyone getting in here, like the credits are rolling, something like that. Names coming down, and Diamond Prox, Umbral Trespass onto Shie, gets himself out of the way, but not out of the way, the Akathi in surprise. And this is insane. Kill after kill for everyone, but it's going in WE's favor. In the end, it's a one for four. And PvP Steos is the only member of Gambit Esports to limp away from that one. He shows up, okay guys, I'm not about this party, and immediately walks it into mid lane. Yeah, it's like, and I'm here, and I'm here, and I'm here. 
And unfortunately, most of those and I'm here's were WE players. But Atlas, there is nothing that I wanted more than to just see these teams go full speed ahead at each other. Again, this is like a dream come true for old school League of Legends fans as we take a look at this. You talked about the layering of CC, 100% agree. Oh, which four just, for two, wasn't it? was just beautiful to watch them absolutely blast Ben. Now, reinforcements arrive earlier for Team WE Shie getting on the side. The teleport comes in. I really like the flash there to dodge the damage as it's coming down. But Condi's already behind them. Diamond Prox is going to be late to the fight. Finds a great cast and picks up another kill as Kira is just trying to zone Mystic on the back half. Will eventually pop Kaka. Yep, barrier. Working out quite well at the same time, meant the Diamond Prox was extraordinarily low when he came in and gave an extra kill over to the Cog as well. Kathy and Surprise picking up kills makes you feel great as an AD carry. As the egg is going to be destroyed as well, and Kira went down in the end. I mean, are you truly maximizing your damage output on Kaka? Exactly. If you don't use the passive? It was like old Zyra. People were saying, Max, you're feeding all the time. What is this? I'm like, no, I'm just correctly utilizing my kit. Just ridiculous. Don't let me play. Uh, I support you in your choices. Well, you don't want to support me. Definitely don't do that. It's going to make you even more upset. Dynaprox looking to try and lock down this Rift Herald. Condi wants to get himself over, but not going to be able to land that one. And is a little bit upset here as he pops his way in. Oh, fantastic aim on the on the cask. And the flash taunt comes in. Diamond Prox punished in every way. And it's Mystic that gets the kill. And now this Kogma is suddenly 3-2-3. Three, and three. So after an explosive early game from Gambit Esports, where Diamond Prox was just basically running a train on multiple lanes, suddenly not transformed yet, getting picked off, and Kogma right back in the driver's seat by being leapfrogged ahead. Yeah, and I actually wanted to ask you about this, because the transformation, of course, is about killing ranged or melee. When you kill Jace, what happens? I'm actually unsure. Yeah. I don't get to see that interaction a lot. In fact, in the LPL, we don't actually play a lot of Jace. It's usually been rookie. So Shie pulling out the pick and Ben pulling out the Janna are indicative that Team WE really have been, uh, you know, scrimming quite heavily and trying to change up some of their picks. It's the same style, but it feels like they're trying to fit more into kind of the Korean meta. Yeah, I actually really like it because we know 957 is a fantastic carry player himself. So that can be flexed, theoretically, as we've got a top lane fight towards the bottom side of the map, but look, that's why we don't talk about it, because it's wet noodles on both sides. No one's really going to die. As there's the Blades Reach that comes in. Umbral Trespass comes down, but not sure whether he really wants this one. Diamond Prox to get out of the way, but not far enough. And Mystic gets another one. Four, two, and three now for the Cog. He's looking for his Ginsu's very, very quickly. Just needs the combine. And see hero kill hero is not working out for Diamond today. Again, just a bit too aggressive. Didn't necessarily have the information to look for that type of invade. And now, again, Kogma gets another piece of gold in his back pocket. And I feel like we're observing the Condi show a little bit here as well. He's 3-0 and 4. Is, he's going to turn up towards the bottom side. PvP Stayo's in trouble, but does have a lot of CC to his name, and it takes a while to kill him, even though he doesn't have that many items. He's just going to back his way out, and WE didn't want to waste their time. But at this point, Team WE just kind of want to funnel a bunch of gold onto Mystic. Uh, I feel like WE have really put Mystic in kind of the new Wei Xiao. If you go back historically with this organization, they, uh, they crafted one of the greatest AD carries of all time by just throwing everything in the Kinshin Seek into his uh, piggy bank. And they do a very similar thing with Mystic. It's not just the composition that was entirely built around him. It's also the fact that they'll slow down the tempo of the game. They'll get him into the mid, get him into these side lanes, and start funneling all of this extra gold and as soon as he has his items which he's now got the rage blade in his back pocket that's when team w will look to strike next well this is very very frightening especially if you can sit in a minion wave and charge that one up 957 hanging out under is in a turret so we've got three members of gambit looking to try and shove this one forward they're staying proactive no matter what and they are still able to get into this jungle Condi not able to necessarily jewel Diamond Fox because he has been farming like an absolute beast this game. We do have control over this top side. Still walking over Vision and WE know exactly what's up. Not going to be too worried about how this one goes. And they're just cool, calm, and collected. This is the WE of old. You know, it's we will make the reactionary plays, and if you make any mistakes, we'll win the game. Well, they're going to have to make a reactionary play here. Yeah, they are. Because. Uh, Gambit, go down. <laughs> Gambit are going full ARAM. They're actually trying to grab control over the Infernal. So by placing the Rift Herald mid, it forces Team WE out of the river. They need to attend to this buff, which gives them full control over this Infernal. They quickly burn it and take it for free. So, oh, 
He's looking for it, jumps into the skies. Lots of AoE damage is there. The Nethergrass, but 957 turns up. Massive knockback from Condi, who just destroys Gambit. And Kira's gonna go down as well. We said Shie was slumping. Well, it's not this game, as they're still looking for more. The slow comes in, but 957 not wanting to dive just yet. And it's like WE is saying, you can have all the dragons, we'll just kill you. They figured it out. They can't start the dragon. That's when the team fights go sideways. They wait for the other team to start the dragon now. But they do have control of the creep wave, and they do have a lot of pushing pressure with the Jace as well as the Kogma behind them. Yeah, you may think that that's only two cast creeps. That doesn't matter. They got five people here and a heck of a lot of damage. Move back up through. You could imagine that they want to take down the mid turret, but Diamond Prox is there. And uh, they're able to actually grab one back. So as far as objectives, I'm feeling okay for Gambit. Not tower, bad. For tower trade as well as the Infernal, the big issue, though, is that it was an inner for an outer. Yeah, that's true. But, I mean, outer mid, still pretty good. I mean, uh, there's arguments here. Still works out. <laughs> I don't know. My, my inner Gambit fan is, uh, is showing. I, I apologize. I mean, the cool thing is, is that the more that the map opens up, the stronger Gambit's composition really gets in terms of making a lot of these picks and hunting down a lot of these assassinations. Is taking a look at that, that was the, the assassination by the this good old Chie. <laughs> yeah, pretty disgusting. Over the wall, great CC layering. It was started out like, uh, by Chie, like you said. He has been slumping, but having a great game this time around. Yeah, now 3-0-6 for Condi as well. I have a feeling that his Gragas needs to be looked at here from some of these teams and play-ins because he just looks so, so comfortable. Despite how things went as far as the challenge that Lion were able to put up against WE, it was still Condi able to get the work done quite nicely. You know, we do forget that Team WE, a lot of these players don't have a lot of experience on the international stage. Outside of MSI, uh, it was really only the IM against TSM that yeah. they had gotten any really real exposure. Not to mention taking down the Tigers as well. I remember that one. Greatest upset in League of Legends history. And you have to remember, I mean, that was the time where Shie and Mystic both debuted on WE as well. This was the start of this, this roster's rise to power. Before that, things were a disaster for them. They were a ninth place team, and this is where these guys have finally come. And you mentioned, you know, best team in China, even though they're playing here in the play-ins. It's about them proving themselves, and maybe the game against Lion didn't quite do that in the early game here this time, didn't quite do that, but now we've got a 4,000 gold lead. Things are looking okay for WE. It's about understanding why I give WE so much credit and the honor of being best seed coming out of the LPL, and it's because of their consistency. If EDG, RNG, and WE all play at the best of their abilities, I don't know who wins for sure, but I trust Team WE to often show up. Oh, Blades Reach coming down for Diamond Prox. Deus. Oh, he's in so much Kira. trouble. Not a lot of mana. She is just going to knock him back into the wall. And yeah, Kira can't quite flap enough. And he's going to cancel that teleport. And unfortunately, that was the play from Gambit Esports. And it's completely absorbed and turned around. Now their members down trying to get into position as Team W are trying to mount an assault on this mid lane. They pull Shie. They're going to have massive pressure in front and behind this tower. And with Cask available, it's super scary to stand. Well, Fundy just throws a party cast. They're going to try and break this one up. As, okay, a lot of CC coming down onto Shie, but you don't want to put it all at the same time. And Mystic is probably the target you're looking for. Shock Blast comes in, not quite enough. The Gambit do need to vacate, and this tower is not long for the world. Yeah, so the cast didn't really connect there. Condi just, I guess, throwing it for prosperity. Yeah, it's a celebration. It's a party cast. But Everyone loves a party cast. <laughs> the chase damage certainly amounting to something. 4, 1, and 5 right now. And like I said, Shie doesn't normally play Jace. This is really the rookie and the Coco champion of the LPL. Hasn't shown its face a lot. I'm trying to think back, you know, to when I was an LPL caster, and I believe he did play a little bit of it when he was in Vogue, but here's the gank. Just didn't quite work. And also absorbed the teleport from Kira, which is going to be a big deal. But again, you know, Gambi Esports. Oh, hold on. Here we are, Desperation Baron time. They've Mystic. got the Choga. Yeah, he's over towards this area. We do have Ben moving over, as this Baron is extraordinarily low. Everyone wants to get down, and that's just going to be eaten. Gambit looking to try and turn this one around. They have the wall for the disengage, and they'll just wander out. That was beautiful. I mean, we can have some of our complaints that we feel that Gambit Esports don't necessarily look far enough ahead when they're making their plans, but their decisive, bold calls just bought them some more time in this game. I feel like you probably should have fish on Baron if you don't know either. Just a little bit of a lapse in judgment there, but that was exactly the moment that it spawned. Gambit knew exactly what they wanted to do, as finally 
Rast form is available for Diamond Prox. 21 minutes into the game, but now he's got the CC. Now he's got the lifesteal, and now things are looking better. Yeah, and now Gambit have another, you know, tank or utility member. As hold on. That was the most instant flash I've ever seen. As Diamond Prox is going to shadow step his way in. Blades Reach doesn't get the knock up, and Stairs is going to pay for it. Condi has cast. Another party. Celebration. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see where the diamond can actually affect this a little bit more now as the inhibitor turret is in trouble. It's a four versus five, and WE can throw out a lot of poke. Another cast to come down. Taunt in at exactly the right time as he uses the ultimate to get a bunch of his health back. Does so effectively, and Condi has to body slam for his life. Walks back into a stun as well. Somehow doesn't die. Living artillery! The execution damage is enough to get rid of blasting. That should spell the end of this turret as they tank it up and take it down. Inhibitor should follow, and WE playing with aggression here at the 22-minute mark. I mean, lose the 20-minute Baron, but they're the ones that open the bottom in here. This is the Team WE that I really expected to come in hot and heavy in this play-in stage. This is why they are known for the blind pick Kogma. Mystic is just so dangerous on this champion. That said, it felt like Gambit gave it a lot of free kills that it shouldn't have necessarily gotten. It was still blasting Edward, finding the 2v2 solo kill on Mystic and Ben. So there's still flaws here. There's still a big Achilles heel that Gambit had been able to punish, but they've lost a lot of steam transferring into the mid game. Diamond Prox is looking to try and take down Gambit's third dragon of the game. But Condi says no, and he's going to be able to shadow step his way away, but this does just provide a leash for WE. We do get that high priority Cloud Drake in comparison to Gambit's two Infernals. I mean, what do they even do, Infernal Drakes? I mean, what's the point? Oh, this is dangerous. PvP stay house. Oh, he's Good night, sweet friends. On. The taunt is available there for 957. Lands it all too easily as Shea looking for the damage. He doesn't want to get eaten still, but the rest of WE going to turn up. I mean, I... That felt like we shouldn't have really shown it, to be honest. Not a whole lot that the Cho'Gath can do. It's back to the void for a moment. And Team WE, it looks like they're just going to steamroll down towards that inhibitor. Mystic was maybe trying to defend the mid lane, but he's waddling down there as fast as his little legs carry him. And this should be a free inhib. I mean, Kira's continuing to push top. He does have teleport. But I mean, what can they do? I mean, in a 4v5 situation, this inhibitor, not long for the world anyway, because it doesn't have a turret defending it. So you may as well just try and get what you can done, but he's not going to stay around. That inner turret survives on the top side. Now five turrets to three, the inhib now gone. I believe, you know, Baron's gonna wear off in another three seconds. So that should mean that at least there'll be a moment of respite. But if there's ever a lane that you want open, you talk about this all the time. That is the Baron inhibitor that WE have taken. And it means that they're set up to try and take the next one. And it means the window of, of error that Gambit now have to play around the next Baron when it spawns just gets that much larger. Um, PvP Steos will have his teleport available. Uh, Kira still has his, but one of these members will have to be very diligent about controlling the bot wave while Team WE are just patient around the Baron. And that's even considering that they think they need the Baron to end. I mean, they lost the first one and they just walked through the base. The gold lead is, is massive and most of that is in the hands of Mystic, exactly where they want it for this composition. Well, we just saw the Baron power play. It's about a thousand gold in the negative for Gambit, unfortunately. WE were able to pressure that turret down, and this is what happens when WE are in control. I mean, you might be able to sneak a Baron like that, but the team fighting prowess with the composition that they've put, them, put together for themselves just feels like WE are in so, so much control. Wits End almost done for Mystic there, has my two favorite items on the way. Ginsu's Rage Blade. Oh man, I'm just so glad that it gets rushed now. I just get so much game time with the Ginsu's in it. But it's now a matter of, you know, what can Gambit do to try to come back from this hole? And it's utilize a lot of the pick on their roster, which is why what Condi's doing is so important. WE have organized themselves, they've got their tank leading in, he's got the sweeper, you know, he's checking every single nook and cranny, every single brush, and denying uh, Gambit any sort of opportunity to abuse Fog of War to find these sneaky picks and to try to create a 4v5 or, or 3v5 disadvantage. And we have to remember as well that, I mean, this Gambit squad does have a lot of wave clear. Remember back, I mean, we were talking about CLGU from the old times. 
that was Froggen. He was the Anivia player, and what did he do? He stalled out games for hours and hours. As there's the knockup on a Mystic, has to flash to get himself out of the way after using the QSS, but there's just too much damage here for WE, and Shie was left unattended. Diamond Prox doesn't want to be tanking those shock blasts. So at least the Glacial Storm is in there. But Gambit barely holding on now, and they always just seem to lose one from every skirmish, and in the meantime, Super Creep's destroying the base. And unfortunately, there's not a lot that Gambit's composition can do if they lose control over vision of an area, because they need to find the pick. They can't simply try to, you know, start a flanking fight. They don't really have those options. They don't have the Gragas, but hold on top. Yeah, Condi's going to be taken down. That's the shutdown going over to Diamond Prox as well as Mystic. He was just concentrating on the turret, now wanting to turn things around. Arden Sensor in there trying to help him out, but that's going to be the double kill. Somehow Diamond Prox grabs one back. That's the shutdown in for Blasting. And can Gambit turn it around is the question. A Cathian surprise was there, but gets absolutely nothing done. And you can see Diamond Prox celebrating by walking through all of the walls to try and get himself back to the base to defend. And I mean, I said that Gambit, you know, their composition didn't give them the necessary tools to look for the big flanking pool, uh, flanking plays when Team W were far forward, that they needed to use their pick. Oh, you know, Team W could just walk through a tower and <laughs> blast all their health away and just feed Gambit some kills. But excellent job picking that up. Makes the so much more <laughs> exciting, though. I tell you that much. She looking to head back home as Edward oh, does not want to fa uh, face tank this guy. And he just, cool guys don't, walk, don't look at explosions, man. Like terrifying. She has so much damage. Oh, here comes the teleport, though. Double teleport. One on the bottom, one on the top of your screen. Because the Baron just spawned yet again. And what again Gambit want to do? They want to kill Baron. They're like, oh, he's got all his fancy new clothes on. That must mean that he's worth a little bit more in the wall. It's going to be in there. This is a 50-50 Baron. They're stolen from Condi. A mystery gifting feels better, but Gambit certainly doesn't. As Shie still looking for more. The flash comes in from Mystic to try and get himself over there. I believe he used the blasting cone because that one was still on cooldown. So that is going to be Shadow Step. Diamond Prox trying to get himself out of the way. At least has his Q to help him out as 957 trying to hold on to the rest of Gambit. But thankfully they only lose one. As now Edward desperately trying to hold on to his base. They lost a Nexus turret. And blasting, blasting. Oh dear. And the Son of Baron strikes again. condi has been a little bit lax in the LPL and his Baron steals, but he holds true there. I do want to point out kind of the cool composition that Gambit have put together. I'm sure we'll see it in the replay, but so far their base is just going to get lit up and destroyed. Yeah. And Condi's going to get rid of this inner turret as well. It's nine turrets to three. 11,000 gold lead is Mystic. We know what he can do on Cogmore, and he certainly does as well, as this Ginsu's is charged up, ready to go. And there is an egg now standing in their way. I'm not entirely sure what happened. How do you taunt an egg? I'm not sure, but Mystic says he just wants to kill it. Minions are streaming into the base. There's only one Nexus turret here, and Gambit desperately trying to hold on. Diamond Prox is going to fall, and despite the fact that they get an ultimate down onto Mystic, which should be a good thing, it's just not going to be enough. They're too far behind, and WE looking to go 2-0 themselves. Cloud9 successful as the tier one seed and WE looking to do the same thing with a home crowd here on day one. Rebranded, re-rostered and remembered, Team WE finish what they started in 2012 and take down Gambit Esports. Gambit, I mean, there were some great moments. The beginning of the game looked good, but in the end, WE, much like the way they were able to take down Lion, it just felt slow and steady until they realized that there was an opportunity to get a lead. Opportunity after opportunity came their way. Gambit not necessarily playing as clean as you have to against this team that loves to punish mistakes. And that's the thing, the key word there, mistakes. You cannot make mistakes against Team WE because they are the patient team of the LPL. They will sit back, they will watch you, and they will look for their area to strike. And it was in that bottom lane skirmish when Mystic started to pick up all of those kills, when things got fast and furious and we were diving towers and trading back needlessly. That's when the table started to turn for Gambit Esports. But otherwise, it looked so good early. Yeah. And I'm really glad that at least some new life was breathed into Gambit and we saw at least the shades of what Kira was capable of doing last year when we saw him at Worlds, of 
what made Gambit so incredibly dominant throughout their regular split. But unfortunately, against WE, it's a little bit of a tough ask. We'll see whether they're going to be able to come back tomorrow, but the beginning of uh, planes not necessarily looking great for Gambit Gaming. And I think it's just because they're not... Gambit Esports, I'm sorry. <laughs> they're not sticking true to the, their core style. You know, it starts off fast and heavy, but then they try yeah. to slow it down and are having uh, a lot of troubles playing from behind, getting that play style to work for them. I like the fact that they have the confidence to grab these comfort picks like the Kane, try to make the plays happen, but they need to make the plays stick. Yeah, and I also did like the Malzahar in the end as well. We saw that it was successful in the laning phase. It just didn't quite mesh as the game went on. And that was a problem for them in their first matchup at the same time. So you could imagine that now going back, looking to try and streamline some things and get themselves towards that 2-2 and hopefully try and get themselves out of this group at the same time. But it really is an uphill struggle right now, especially with how dominant Lyon were looking. And man, WE also, it just feels like they're at the point where if you wait too long, WE are just going to win, and that is so, so frightening. That said, their team fighting did look much better this time around, so this was a better performance, and it looks like Team WE are finally starting to ramp up after their very tough victory over Lion. Yeah, just warming up. But to get their thoughts on that win from Team WE, let's send it over to the analyst desk. Thank you, Atlas. Interesting game, definitely. I think mm -hmm. WE continuing to look more and more dominant as they go further in the tournament now. Looking at how this unfolded, right off the bat, Zyrene, you said you wanted to see Diamond Proc step up. I feel like we did see that coming out in the early game. A little bit. I think there were some moments where he was able to make some big plays. There were also some bigger problems later on in the game. Uh, Draft-wise, I like that they stayed with a lot of aggressive picks. They still have their kind of meta that they're playing. The, the Anivia is one that we saw Kira play a ton, as well as the Malzahar support trying to make some plays with it early on. Did actually work out as well. Yeah, they did some kind of uh, interesting strat early to invade, get Diamond Prox ahead with the Raptors and the Red, and to be able to triple buff Condi. Like, I think they started off with a pretty interesting strategy, but they sacked the bottom lane to do so. Blasting got even further behind. And then, you know, Mystic with the blind pick Kog'Maw like one of the best picks for him and WE was able to kind of hit that late game. So it kind of didn't really matter when those uh, that mid game kind of rolled around that Gambit had done so well in the early parts of the game. Well, and there were a lot of mistakes. Well, yeah. to be fair, <laughs> some mistakes coming from Gambit, but of course, as we look across both junglers, we saw so much presence on both sides. Diamond Prox, of course, the first guy to really make his presence known in those lanes. But when we look at Condi, Condi was matching him blow for blow. Yeah, it was, it was a very back and forth game in that early game with both junglers having big plays. Gambit started it out, kicked it off with the cane being able to come over the wall really early on onto the side of GA right there. Yeah, and then went immediately bottom, got flashes there, but then it got turned around. Condi was able to make a play mid, get Kira, then make a play bottom, and actually go to the two lanes that Diamond had actually upset. Right, and the funny thing was, a lot of these uh, ganks that Diamond was turning, he actually didn't get assist for some of them mm. because the kills were coming after. Gets an advantage for Kira there in the mid lane, who later picks up the kill, and then like you were just saying, Condi coming in to try and reset these lanes. And the sad thing, too, is, of course, he didn't really transform until around the 20-minute uh, mark, which is incredibly late for Kane. Yeah, the problem was he kept ganking range champions, so he goes Jace, who's in, uh, you know, uh, cannon form, so he's not getting the red globs to be able to turn into the melee form. And then this was actually just a great gank setup here by WE. They were baiting like they were trying to hit a pink ward to clear it and over-aggressing, which made Gambit's bot lane want to punish them for that, but they knew Connie was coming in the backside to get that kill. So just really heads-up play out of WE coordinating to make sure that they manipulate Gambit to do what they want. Yeah, early lead for Diamond Prox was aggressive, exactly what I wanted to see, but I felt like they didn't take enough advantage of it uh, in terms of they played slow from that point because they got their kills, they got their summoner spells in terms of an advantage, but... Kira, too far forward, not enough ward coverage, uh, Diamond not on that side of the map to assist. Those types of uh, kind of windows, I don't feel like Gambit uh, respect that their opponents can be in that area and can be aggressive. Well, and speaking of not respecting, as we take a look at our Acer Predator replay, you can see WE uh, clearly taking advantage of a surprise attack coming up from the Jace in the brush. And to be fair, I wouldn't have respected this one either. I did not know this no, was something you that, could crazy. do. That's a big boy play. You ask for the Chanel, <laughs> you jump into five people, and you say, let's go. So, I mean, GA going a little crazy there. Did have his team's backup. Kondi was able to follow up on that play very well. That is kind of what started breaking the game completely open. It's unfortunate that they were losing the Infernal Dragons, but they're making sure to walk away with the kills. Yeah, GA completely able to kind of uh, 
push away what had happened early. The early gank's not a problem. The solo death, I guess, not a problem for him either. Almost 1,000 damage per minute, a little bit higher than that. And two <laughs> members of WE able to come up with those gigantic numbers. And the thing was right before that big play, uh, like 11 and a half minutes in the game, we had our first kind of fiesta play of Worlds. I feel like they, Your have favorite. To, they have to happen at some point during the group stages. And there we had some like four for one down the bot lane early on. So I just love any time it's the first World Fiesta, Look, you got to remember it. Take risks. It's best of one. I know, I love like it. To fight, you can't knock it. But of course, another fantastic play was Connie's Baron Steel. And with that, mystery gift bonuses have been activated in our very first day of world so if you're looking for those esports skins those legendary skins now is the time yeah a lot of na fans are probably gonna wake up happy tomorrow if they miss this game you know <laughs> regular sleep schedule people i mean now you get to say hey i suddenly get more stuff this is awesome yeah, i hear these stack as well so we get more baron steals yeah, get more, more baron things. steals we need more bot lane parties we need yeah, just, more, bring it on. just more well we've got one more game and until we wrap up day one regional rivals oce's dire wolves and brazil's team one esports face off for the pride of their crowds back home but before we go with a break let's hand it over to fish who has an interview with team we's jungler condi hey guys i'm here with condi from team we after an impressive victory over Gambit Esports. Condi, the first thing I want to talk about is Gambit threw out some really unorthodox picks. We had Kane, we had Anivia, we had Malzahar, and it seemed like it threw you guys off. Early on in the game, you fell quite far behind. What was the team comms like when you guys were falling that far behind? Gambit的选出了一些比较出奇的一些英雄，比如像说他们的凯凯影，比如像他他们的呃中路的一个冰鸟，以及下路的马尔扎哈。那你们在前期的话，其实落后了蛮多。那你们对于就是在阵容上的
Well, congratulations on your 2-0 victory here today. Best of luck for the rest of the tournament. For now, guys, we're going to go into a quick break, but we'll be back with the grudge match that continues between Oceania and Brazil. The Diwals take on Team 1 up next. So that's only one. Oh, God. Kira, the auto attack is there. He's going to need another one. A sheer jumps forward. Good flashback as First Blood comes in for Kira. Everyone getting in here like the credits are rolling. Something like that. Names coming down and Diamond Prox. Umbral Trespass onto Shie. Gets himself out of the way, but not out of the way. The Akathi in surprise. Umbral Trespass comes down, but not sure whether he really wants this one. Diamond Prox to get out of the way, but not far enough. He's looking for it. Jumps into the skies. Lots of AoE damage is there. So Nethergrass with 9 5 7 turns up. Massive knockback from Condi, who just destroys Gambit. This is a 50 50 Baron, though, stolen from Condi. Your mystery gifting feels better, but Gambit certainly doesn't. As Shie still looking for more. The flash comes in from Mystic, and despite the fact that they get an ultimate down onto Mystic, which should be a good thing. It's just not going to be enough. They're too far behind, and WE looking to go 2-0 themselves. 